Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. My name is Vinod Nair, and welcome to the Accelerate Workshop uh, tracks on the top five most innovative practices in diversity hiring. Uh, this session will be held between 1.30 to 4 p.m. And I also request all the attendees to kindly post their questions on the q and sessions so that I can relay the same to all the speakers, all right? So our first speaker for the session is Ms. Avantika Nigam, Director, HR PepsiCo. I welcome Avantika to come in and present. Avantika, the stage is all yours. Thank you so much, Vinod. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. I'm very privileged to share PepsiCo's uh, journey towards gender parity at this uh, forum. Uh, and I'll be happy to take any questions from all of you towards the last 10 minutes of my slot. Uh, I'd like to start by introducing PepsiCo. Uh, PepsiCo is a Fortune 50 company. Uh, it's uh, over $70 billion now in revenue uh, globally. We have a footprint of over 200 countries and territories. And our mission is to create more smiles with every sip and every bite. And with that, I'll take you to some of our iconic brands. You'll recognize some of them for sure. Uh, and I do hope that you and your loved ones, um, uh, you know, have more smiles created in your homes uh, with um, uh, the products that we bring to your families every day. Uh, I will uh, uh, now take you to a slide that I feel extremely proud about, which is, uh, you know, the, re the recognition and the awards that PepsiCo has won. And I'm going to talk about two of them in particular. Uh, so one is about being the most, most ethical company in the world, and PepsiCo has won that 15 years in, the, in a row. And we've also been on Fortune's uh, world's most admired companies for 16 years in a row. Uh, there are many others here that uh, you know, are very close to my heart around sustainability, around PepsiCo's commitment to being a best employer. Uh, and, and these are things that we value a lot and we work very, very hard towards. Let's take you to a little video that we use to introduce candidates. To there are people who are into music. There are people who are into video games. There are people who are into the arts and theater. It's bringing that mishmash of just different personalities together. It's the fantastic people that are at PepsiCo. Smartest, most visionary people that I think I've ever met. The opportunities are incredible. The impact is massive. The fact that you can work in an organization that is so on the edge of things to come, that's the creativity, that's the entrepreneurship that PepsiCo has. I like the pace, I love the informality, and I also love the fact that I can be myself, but I feel like I'm being challenged all the time. There is not one week that's the same as the other week. So if you don't like to be bored, if you don't like to sit in the same spot or do the same routine thing, that's the place for you. So as we talk about gender parity, I want to first start by saying that PepsiCo's commitment to diversity and engagement has, has been long standing. It's not new. Uh, and it also covers much more than just gender. Way back in the 1940s, when this was unheard of, PepsiCo was the first company to put together uh, a black sales team. Uh, and uh, you know, one of those salespeople actually in the 19, in 1962, became the very first um, African American vice president of sales in a major MNC in the world, uh, and and we continue to have awards on diversity, equity, and inclusion in his name. Uh, his name is Harvey C. Russell. In 1950, in 1950s, we got in a female board member. Again, pathbreaking at the time. Uh, this was, uh, you know, uh, extremely unheard of, and we were one of the first companies to take a step in that direction. So diversity and inclusion and equity have really been seen as a competitive business advantage that fuels innovations and strengthens our reputation, fosters engagement, 
with employees and members of the communities in which we do business. It's very core to who we are as a company. Uh, we have a 2025 goal to strive to achieve gender parity in our management roles and pay equity for women. This is something we've been focused on for a very long time now. Uh, and we are, are making very uh, good progress uh, towards uh, this goal globally. If you'd like to know more, please do visit our website. And uh, you know, there's a whole page and has a lot of workforce metrics, et cetera, there as well. We are enabling gender parity through hiring in many different ways. I'm gonna take you through a few now. Uh, the first is having inclusive job descriptions, right? Oftentimes you have uh, the mention of he uh, in, uh, you know, the ideal candidate must have X, Y, Z, but oftentimes it's referred to a he. And then we went on to the practice of doing he stroke she as, you know, um, a corporate community. I think one of the things that we have started doing now is uh, is putting she ahead of he uh, and saying she stroke he uh, so that it also communicates that these roles are, uh, you know, firstly, uh, of course, open to both genders and we value both genders equally, not having he ahead of she uh, at all times. Uh, and that's been one of the, uh, one of the small ways in, in which to communicate that. We've also had a lot of training for our talent acquisition people to understand uh, what kind of job descriptions um, would really be appealing to both genders because there are, there are times where certain biases creep in. We use certain words that uh, might be um, at a subconscious level communicating that we are looking for a male candidate or uh, sub, at a subconscious level, communicating to female candidates that this might not be the ideal role for you. So we do not do want to stay away from those biases. And this is something that we've been focused on at a very conscious level. We also encourage female referrals quite openly. Uh, and that's something that's worked very well for us as we've gone through this uh, journey on gender parity. Um, and uh, today we are, like I said earlier, getting very close to our goal uh, of uh, achieving gender parity by 2025, uh, especially for leadership and managerial roles. And then we have our social media campaigns and our uh, uh, you know, employee advocacy. Uh, we do a lot of that. Please do go into our handles on uh, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Uh, I, uh, I've just put a few uh, screen grabs of, uh, you know, employee advocacy. This has not been asked for. They've done it on their own. And we're, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know I, I, was, I feel very happy and proud to see when both men and women, and I've highlighted the women here right now, uh, and some of them um, uh, speak proudly about, uh, you know, their employment experience with, uh, with PepsiCo. We, of course, also have social media campaigns that are run by the company. And the video you just saw before this slide, uh, was part of our social media campaign towards um, say, uh, communicating our EVP to uh, future candidates. Uh, we also engage our can candidates very, very consciously as they are you know, looking to consider PepsiCo as, a, uh, as an employer. We have uh, leadership talks um, uh, that we do frequently at various events and various forums, including campuses, as well as industry bodies. Uh, and uh, you know, what you saw on the previous si slide was a horizon event where one of our leaders was, uh, uh, you know, was uh, uh, speaking a few months ago. Um, we have here on the screen below, you know, uh, a set of ladies. This is before, uh, just before COVID uh, struck us, where uh, you know all of us were at ISB speaking to women who are in the workforce uh, today about uh, you know certain subjects. Um, and we have uh, uh, participation in various virtual job fairs. Uh, we participate in hackathons. Uh, and um, the last one here, which is continuous candidate engagement and, on and onboarding buddies. This is, I think, really a strength uh, and something that we have uh, uh, developed as a discipline now, where we, for every single candidate who is joining us, we uh, have the hiring manager stay connected with the candidate on a continuous basis during the time where they're, um, you know, where they're yet to join us. Uh, so that any questions that they have, 
you know, are answered and they continue to feel more comfortable as they are making that switch, this becomes very important in a virtual environment because the reality is when you move from one company to, to another and we're all working virtually, essentially what's happening is that you're sitting at the same desk, probably looking into a new computer at new faces, but nothing much in your life on a daily basis really changes. So it becomes that much more important to provide candidates an engaging experience while they're serving notice periods in other companies. I think another one is onboarding buddies. Uh, in some cases, we do have buddies during the notice period time as well. So you can ask someone who is an employee, uh, you know, any questions that you have uh, you know, and, and stay connected uh, during your notice period. We definitely do have an onboarding buddy once people come on board. Uh, and so from day one, you have someone on the team who will actually be available to talk to you, to help you on board, to make you comfortable, to answer any questions that you might have. We also get, we also do some engagement and fun stuff with the onboarding buddies to make sure that everyone stays committed to this. And we ask them, uh, we quiz them, uh, both the new hire as well as the onboarding buddy on, on each other. So they definitely need to prepare and they definitely need to make that connection prior to that uh, quiz if they you know, want to do well in it. Um, okay, so then um, I'd, uh, you know, getting people into the door is just the first step. Um, making them successful is so much more important. Uh, and I think that's what um, our, our focus continues to remain on uh, as employees join us is to promote a culture of inclusion. And uh, one thing that I'm really happy about much before Black Lives Matter happened or any of the other uh, you know, more recent events happened, we were already focused on unconscious bias training. At that time, it was just for you know, hiring managers. Now it's for everyone. Um, and, um, uh, and, and that has really, um, I feel, helped us become more educated, more aware, and therefore much more sensitive uh, to how important it is to be inclusive. Um, one of the things we focused on a lot also is to make sure that our different um, uh, uh, diverse pools of talent are represented adequately. So we have uh, an opportunity for women to have a sense of community through a women's inclu inclusion network. You see a picture with a lot of people you know, in person. This is from December, 2019 where uh, you know, this is the Women's Inclusion Network. We had an event there, some leaders in the front row uh, you know, who had answered questions uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, we had some fun uh, weaved in as well. And we do this pretty often. We've continued to do so even virtually. Uh, it's so important for us to have advocates uh, for uh, you know, um, uh, this particular agenda. And therefore, if men are not part of it, it's never going to happen. Uh, and, and, and that's why we also have a chapter of men advocating real change. And these are men who are allies and who are uh, you know, open allies and they're happy to talk about it and, and happy to engage with our, uh, you know, our women and men uh, on their own journey of becoming more uh, conscious about inclusion and therefore being allies for each other. We had an event last year done by employees for employees, which was called Diversity Rocks. And men and women came together uh, to appreciate each other. And I think that was really a great step towards allyship, something I'm truly proud of. And I, I truly believe that that helps both men and women appreciate each other. One is not more important than the other. Uh, and uh, you know, sometimes when we, put in a lot of focus on women, the men start feeling left out. Uh, and so we definitely don't want that. We want both to be allies for each other. And, and, and that's why win and men who win is, uh, or uh, men advocating real change are both so important for us. Uh, with COVID and even prior, um, you know, PepsiCo has always been about engaging the entire family. And we have always had events that bring families together uh, we do want employees and their families to feel associated, connected with the company and valued in the company. Uh, and so we continue that family engagement even now. Um, I think um, men have uh, you know, also become much more aware of all the responsibilities of um, uh, you know, families in the virtual world now. 
and we see a lot of fathers actively bringing their kids into events and we have summer camps we have uh, you know just fun events that happen tambola for families and things like that uh, you know um, uh, from time to time and you can see a little screen screen grab over there of one of those events when we did it uh, you know virtually uh, and we have a lot of holistic wellness programs that happen uh, you know, throughout the year that look at uh, especially emotional wellness, physical wellness, et cetera, which are both for men and women and sometimes focus on one, uh, you know, key issue, like let's say during, um, you know, men, men's health month, November, uh, you know, uh, dialing up focus on men and uh, during times where there is a specific focus on female health, then, you know, we do pick that up as well, uh, but overall they cover both. All of what I've just spoke about is uh, more foundational in nature, I feel. Uh, one of the things that I feel very passionately about and PepsiCo really promotes is staying focused on developing our female talent because uh, as most of us know, there is a huge risk of women dropping out of the workforce or reaching a glass ceiling around mid-management. Uh, and um, sometimes the crucial gap is in them getting the right input at the right time. So this is something that we are really, really focusing on. And we uh, you know, have various opportunities for women to come together and get focused inputs, developmental inputs that are more relevant for women. For instance, research tells us that sometimes women are less confident about pitching for themselves. Uh, they might not uh, be as effective in networking when it comes to their career uh, as men traditionally have been. Uh, they might not feel so comfortable talking about themselves through an elevator pitch. So how do we help, help them rehearse some of these things and be much more prepared, understand the value of it and equip them uh, you know, in, in taking on that journey? And, and what you see on the screen is various sessions and various leaders who've actually taken uh, you know, sessions for people through the win, uh, you know, the Women's Inclusion Network, bringing women together and talking to them about these key issues and giving them, uh, you know, uh, little nuggets of uh, tips and tricks that will help them navigate through their career. Even beyond that, we have the Million Women Mentors Program. And as I get into that, I want to, uh, you know, just share a, a brief video about this before I, uh, you know, I move uh, forward. So. Million Women Mentors is a, um, uh, you know, is a, a foundation that PepsiCo was a founding member of. And we have many, many uh, women in STEM in PepsiCo who are working both for internal uh, talent that we have, as well as for, uh, you know, young girls and women in the community who are still studying or yet to start their corporate careers or have, you know, our early career and they would like to uh, you know, get some mentorship on how do they move forward in their careers. Um, women in STEM is a is an area that is a huge focus to many companies because there is a, firstly a lack of talent pool in um, in in STEM careers, uh, and then nurturing that talent pool is so important. Making sure that they have the right role models is so important. Making sure that they get the uh, the encouragement at the right time uh, uh, to be able to take bold steps in their career uh, is um, is so extremely important. So, Million Women Mentors is something that we are leveraging now for our internal, uh, uh, you know, associates as well. We have forty seven mid mid career women getting mentored by twenty eight senior women across PepsiCo across the globe, uh, you know, who have volunteered their time to be able to be mentors for them over a one year period of time. Uh, and uh, this is something that uh, I went through something similar about five years ago. It really changed the course of my career. And I do hope that 
uh, you know, all the women within PepsiCo and outside in the community are able to get a similar, uh, you know, uh, similar experience and similar value from uh, the ski initiative that we are driving. One of the other things that I do want to talk about is about our work in the communities on this front. Uh, we have recently started uh, an apprenticeship program for women from underserved and underprivileged communities. Uh, we are planning to do 30 this year. We've already got five in the door. Uh, right now, we've spent 150 volunteering hours uh, on, um, on uh, working with women from underserved communities uh, on various subjects where leaders from PepsiCo have run virtual classes for them to help equip them uh, you know, in their careers. These are all women who have never had a job before. Uh, they, while they come from uh, you know, less privileged backgrounds, they, they do have the educational qualifications there. They've done their you know, uh, BTECs, MTECs, BCA, MCA, and various other courses. They just haven't, haven't found a job yet. And, uh, or they're still studying and they're about to complete these courses. Uh, and uh, it's really gratifying. It's really um, great to see that uh, these, these, there are agencies out there who are you know, making it easier for companies like PepsiCo uh, and employees from within our teams uh, get the opportunity to volunteer and make a difference in our communities. PepsiCo, one needs to be agile, take ownership to grow, and make a difference. We constantly learn from our critical experiences, which help us sharpen our skills and prepare us for the next level. We are building strategic capabilities by a high-energy team, and you get to learn from that unique experience. You will learn as you go, and the sense of accomplishment is really unmatched. At PepsiCo, I have the opportunity to work with talented teams. We are empowered to deliver superlative outcomes and trust you with great flexibility. What drives me every day is the opportunity to think creatively and deliver on strategic projects. I also have various platforms to build my leadership and functional skills to prepare me for future roles. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Avantika. Uh, it was great to know about uh, the kind of innovative practices PepsiCo is taking in terms of diversity hiring. So once again, thank you so much for your time. And uh, it's, it's a pleasure to meet you. Likewise, pleasure to be here. Thank you and all the best for the rest of the program. Thank you so much, Avantika.